We have a variety of tools at our disposal to cull through those 23 million channels and, and, and in an expeditious way. So when we talk about aggressiveness, we are typically talking about civil penalties. Not only can we sue Google and YouTube for compliance with COPPA, but also individual channel owners and content creators. This video is going to be very different from the last video I posted. The last video I posted was sort of meant to be a joke. It was meant to be entertaining. This video is gonna be opposite. I'm not gonna wear the blue shirt. I'm not gonna be in Chatronic character. I apologize if I'm not even very entertaining in this video. This video is very serious. It's meant to be informative. I need to clear up some things and I need to share with you some things that I found out about Kappa. It's very serious and I'm just gonna be frank, not enough people either know about this, not enough people are talking about this. Before I even talk anymore, I need to immediately correct myself on something I stated in my last video. Gaming content is not safe and it is not being given an exception when it comes to COPPA. It is subject to COPPA just as much as anything else. But Chad, the email you had in the video you said was from YouTube. It wasn't, I was wrong. Um, I was misinformed. That was not an email from YouTube. So yeah, the stupid secret method I showed off in my last video, not even that will work. Not that that was even like meant to be taken serious. That was, that was a joke. So just to confirm, I spoke to YouTube staff. I spoke to YouTube staff that specialize in gaming specifically. And gaming content is subject to COPPA just like everything else. I made sure to speak with YouTube directly about this to be sure and I was wrong. Yeah, I uh, I feel my video did a huge injustice to this situation. Um, it misinformed a lot of people. A lot of gaming channels who probably don't even end up seeing this video, but they saw my last one, probably still think they're safe, and they're not. They're not. So, um, yeah, gaming content is not safe. A lot of other content that I didn't even consider is in major trouble with this. Um, anything with cartoons, anything with animation, um, even the YouTube bot went around and flagged a majority of things that just had the word animation or animated. Um, cartoons are, are under attack. Toys are definitely under attack. Gaming content is under attack. This is like huge. Not enough people realize the giant meteor that is the FTC coming to destroy YouTube by January 1st. This is is not being given enough attention. It is just not. Just real quick for those uninformed for what happens when you upload a new video and you mark it for kids. Notifications are off. People will not be notified of the new video. Comments will be off. There will be no comments on the new video. The video will not be searchable on YouTube and the video will not be recommended on YouTube. And if those previous things weren't worse enough, the video is also going to make 90% less money because it will not have targeted ads. <laughs> so obviously these things are very bad and I imagine a lot of people are probably going to do everything in their power to check their videos as not for kids. They definitely are going to try and avoid this. And if you're one of those people, I invite you to keep watching this video because you might want to rethink about that. Here's the FTC's official survey on compliance when it comes to COPPA. When we scroll down to section B1, we can see how incredibly vague the FTC's description is for what counts as children's content. Its first description is that subject matter that is appealing to children. That itself is incredibly vague. And here you can see a bunch of other things. Music, video games slash computer games, cartoon characters, sports, stories, toys, fantasy, arts and crafts, pets, products primarily purchased or consumed by kids like snack food or cereal. This is just ridiculous. Like adults eat cereal, adults eat snack food, adults indulge in almost all of these things. This is where it gets really good when it describes uh, language that is aimed at children. Uh, terminology for words such as fun, free stuff, whatever, cool, Duh, games. Can you tell this has not really been updated since 1998? Whether the website uses visual content appealing to children, animated characters, bold or fast moving graphics, 
or bright and vibrant colors. Virtually everyone I know who makes content generally falls inside of using bright and vibrant colors. Not because we're trying to target children or appeal to children, but because we naturally want things to be eye-catching and people to click on our videos. Descriptions like this are just ridiculously vague and need to be redefined. Also, not just music, audio content in general appealing to children. Popular tunes or songs, cartoon voices. This is insane. I am not a lawyer. Do not take what I say as legal advice, but however, I do think I am allowed to share my opinion and predictions on this. I'm one of the people that likes to brace for the worst. So just, I wouldn't say take what I say with a grain of salt. No, take it very seriously because what I say could happen. I hope it doesn't, but it might. And I've done a lot of reading. I listened and watched the entire FTC conference about this. Um, I've listened to everything YouTube has had to say about this. I will link to the entire FTC conference about this in the video or in the video description if you want to watch it for yourself. It's still kind of vague, but it should be enough to scare you to think that this is big. First of all, what a lot of ignorant people are thinking, nobody's going to get fined. 100% wrong. FTC says themselves, they're finding people. They're finding content creators specifically. Their words exactly. Go watch the conference. Hi, Stephen from CBS News. Is it safe to say if YouTube is informing channel creators that they need to be COPPA compliant, they go through the training, moving forward, content creators are more at risk than the actual platform at being fined? Content creators are always at risk of being fined because they're the con they, and the and channel owners because there we have a situation where we have a website or an online service that is directed to children. So there in the general audience platform, we still have this knowledge requirement that we have to, that we have to prove up. So there is, um, I think in theory as well as practically speaking, uh, generally a, a, a higher risk for channel owners and content creators who after all are con are creating this content. Who are they going to find? They are going to find people that they find in violation of COPPA. And that basically means that if your video looks like it's meant for kids and it's not marked for kids, that's when you get the fine. And the fine is huge, or it could be huge. We don't know the exact number, but it could be definitely up to $42,000 per video. Another thing that needs to be made very clear I think everyone's familiar with the sweep that YouTube just did where YouTube themselves marked some of your videos for kids. Um, they were marked by YouTube. Now, YouTube was not required to do that. YouTube decided to do that voluntarily to help assist creators. Ultimately, the FTC is going to hold you liable, not YouTube in this case. So, just because YouTube didn't mark a video of yours does not mean that it's COPA compliant and that it's safe. That is not what that indicates. And it is very humorous how everyone knows how terrible YouTube's bots are at detecting things and suddenly now everyone's trusting what and what it's not picking. But if you're a content creator that's making a living uh, making videos that could be interpreted as for children, get business liability insurance, get a lawyer now. Like, I am serious. This is not something to just wait and see what happens. This is not a small YouTube update. In fact, that's another rumor. Everyone thinks that this is YouTube's new rule. It is not. It is our government's rule. This is the law being revised. This is not some new copyright YouTube rule or something. This is not that situation. There's a lot of people that are saying, yeah, but it's YouTube's fault that this happened. And yeah, it is. But like, where next? YouTube paid the fine. Now the liability is on content creators. So yeah, YouTube kind of messed up. But legally, you got to be worried about yourself now. That's just the end game we're in right now. So it doesn't matter whose fault it is. This is just where we're at right now. Pointing fingers won't do anything at this point. It just won't. People keep saying this has to do with Elsagate. No. People keep saying this has to do with all the inappropriate children's videos. No. 
People think that this has to do with uh, the child pedo thing where a lot of people's comments got removed. No. Doesn't have to do with any of those things. This has to do with a law that originated in 1998 called CAPA, and it gets revised every 10 years. Uh, it was last revised in 2013, and now it was almost due to be revised, but not until 2023. But because a lot of child advocacy groups complained specifically to the FTC about YouTube, they decided to revise the law early. So that's why it happened. The FTC, unfortunately, even because child content is on the regular version of YouTube, has to treat it under the same conditions as children's content would be treated on any platform whether it be on YouTube Kids or even a different website. So that's why YouTube is basically come under attack and not, they're not like ignoring that YouTube Kids exists, although it's an option because the same content that's on YouTube Kids is still on YouTube has to fall under the same regulation of under COPPA. With all that out of the way, it's time for me to scare you again because you should be. This is very scary. Um, a lot of people are treating this whole like, set my videos for kids like a Boy Scout honor system. Uh, this, is, this is not that kind of system. In fact, this is huge. What you say in this setting is like how the law is going to treat you. Not, it's not the Boy Scout honor system. This is not you saying to YouTube, I am not intending on targeting kids, so therefore I am safe because I said so. This is not that kind of system. There's going to be people who question you, specifically the FTC. It doesn't matter what you say in the setting. The FTC is going to look at your video. They're going to look at it. You say it's for kids or not for kids. They're going to look at it. And if on the surface level, your thumbnail has cartoons, it's about a game kids like, it's about toys. This isn't about trying to trick a YouTube algorithm. Human beings at the FTC who are unfamiliar with pop culture, um, they're not as aware that adults enjoy cartoons like SpongeBob SquarePants. They're not as aware that there are adult um, toy collectors. They are going to, like I said, look at it at surface value. And if it just looks like kids would even have any interest at all on clicking on your video, they could ultimately make the determination that your video is targeting kids. Uh, only way you'd be safe is if you did have it marked for kids. That is where you are not liable. Um, yeah, a lot of people think that they're just like, this is just one of those things where we're supposed to self-police ourselves. Um, no, it's not. There are going to be outside parties looking in at your content and deciding things. It doesn't matter if I make a Happy Meal toy unboxing and I drop an F-bomb in the middle of the video. You don't know before you click on the video that I drop an F-bomb in it. You don't know that. And the thumbnail's probably still going to contain pictures of the Happy Meal toys and the title's going to insinuate that the video is about Happy Meal toys. So I'm liable if I... That is, if I said that that video is not for kids, they'll disagree. And because the video is about Happy Meal toys, it doesn't matter that you swore. From the beginning, they'll see it as you made a video that tried or is attempting to lure kids to watch. It's their decision ultimately that matters, not what we think. It doesn't matter. We can make the call ahead of time whether we think it's for kids or not, but it's ultimately what they think that's going to decide whether you get fined or punished for it. That's what people are not grasping right now. So like what gaming content is even safe? I don't know. I would, again, not legal advice, but I would like to imagine that any game probably rated teen on up is probably okay. Rated E games, I have no idea. Um, a lot of rated E games have cartoon characters that's been made very clear that they think cartoons are meant for kids, regardless of context. I don't know. Um, is Mario um, a character that the FTC is going to think is child appealing and therefore affect 
the outcome decision of a lot of videos. I don't know. It could. I don't know. Uh, arts and crafts videos are being considered educational um, and aimed at kids. Uh, arts and crafts videos. They're subject to this. Um, it's just like this is just a nightmare. Um, a lot of people uh, wondering what's happening to my channel. Um, I went through. I could probably put a quick list on the screen. Uh, there are 96 videos that I think an outside stranger that's part of our U.S. government could think that these are videos potentially targeting children, even though when I made these videos, I didn't make them to target children specifically. So I'm going to have to mark them as such because I don't want to be the first person that's made an example um, by them. And uh, I don't know if you noticed, but like I have 200 videos on my channel. That was a list of 96 videos. So my income is probably going to dip 50% starting January 1st. And that's another thing people don't know is like, although there's all these new settings and stuff, this doesn't, as far as I know, <laughs> gotta be careful what I say. As far as I know, this doesn't, co uh, this doesn't go into effect until January 1st. If there's anything I just want people to really take away from this video is that just because you tick the little box that says that my videos are not meant for kids uh, does not erase you from all liability. You are not 100% safe just because you tick that box. That is the main thing I want people to take away. Think seriously about what a complete stranger might think when they look at your channel and your videos. And try and think outside the box. Because like I said, these are not people that are super familiar with pop culture. They don't understand internet culture. Um, they might not even 100% understand what adults really enjoy um, to differ from what kids enjoy. Chad, this is very scary. Stop talking. Uh, there is some good news. There is some good news. The FTC has kindly extended the period for public comment on this. They have not, this has not gone through officially yet. There is time to make them reconsider this. The deadline is December 9th. You can leave a public comment on regulations.gov concerning COPPA and this revision. I will link to that in the video description. I strongly urge everyone to go there and leave a comment. Be civil in what you say. Be civil. We need to make it clear that if this passes in the way it is, there'll be way less incentive for people to make child-oriented content online. People won't comply to COPPA, they're just going to switch to making more mature content. That's what a majority of people are going to do. And that's not good because kids aren't going away. They're going to keep crawling onto the website. And in a few years time, the majority of content online is going to be not made with them in mind. What they might end up watching might not be appropriate for them because ultimately, the internet exists and the kids are going to keep coming onto it. That's just what we need to get across. This is not good for content creators. This is not good for kids who want to watch kid oriented content. Uh, this is just ultimately going to make it disappear. That's what it's going to do. Um, there needs to be just as much of an incentive financially for someone to make kid oriented content as any other type of content. This is just not the answer. And there's probably some things I forgot to mention in this video, but there's just so much about it that it's just impossible to cover it in one video entirely. All I'm asking is that you leave a comment on the FTC's website. There is a petition um, on change.org. I will link to that as well. Sign that. And uh, the third thing that you can do is help raise awareness because this is not being talked about as much as it should be. Um, there are content creators bigger than me that should be discussing this, and they're not. And I'm kind of disappointed in some of the people I watch. I wish that there was more discussion about this. This is huge. This could impact the website in a very negative way and in ways that the people not talking about it don't even realize. So help spread the word. That's the third thing I really want people to do is help spread the word. Chad, you're just talking about this because you're going to make less money. Yeah, that is why I'm talking about it. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to survive. I'm going to be okay.
I'm going to suffer, but I imagine in the long run, I'm still going to be able to continue doing YouTube. That's not the case for many other people. That's not going to be the case for channels smaller than me. That's not going to be the case for channels that have covered a single genre, such as toys or cartoons or even games. This is much worse for other people. And I care about YouTube as a community. I, of course, am being impacted by this, but this is much worse for other people. For a lot of other people, this is it. This is their ending chapter in their YouTube career. So, yeah, I care about it for that reason, too.